Hey everybody and welcome back to Elderberry Sprout. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this leather traveler's notebook cover out of some scrap leather. So today it's a very chilly day in my shed. <laughs> I just managed to get the temperature up to 58 degrees, which is manageable. So the reason that I need to make a new one is because the bullet journal that I'm using, let's see, is a little bit wider than my traveler's notebook is. So I want to be able to have enough room to have my traveler's notebook signatures as well as my bullet journal inside the cover itself. So I need to make a wider version. So to do that, I'm going to begin by measuring the cover that I do have and figure out how much wider I want it to be. So believe it or not, if you can tell from the color difference, this is the same leather that I made this out of originally. So thankfully I have enough left over to make another one. So let's look at the dimensions. Let's see what size I want it to be. So after inspecting this, I've decided I want it to be three quarters of an inch longer on the top and on the bottom. So that's going to be an inch and a half total to the width of this piece of leather. looking a little bit more official and I will say that I do prefer to use Ooh, beauty youtuber that little hook style of uh, a exacto knife blade so that cuts really well on leather so let's see how everything fits and I know that I like this number of signatures particularly so I'm going to make sure that it's this exact amount of stuff that fits well but as you can see, we've got quite a bit of extra room on this back end. So I'm actually gonna trim probably about half an inch off of one side. So it's like a quarter inch off of each. Cause once this, is, this gets more squared over here, everything will shrink back. So it'll push all the papers forward a little bit more. So I think half an inch should be enough to clean all that up. Okay, now let's try that again. Oh, see, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Oh, cool. So you see how there's enough room? Oh, that's so nice. Oh my gosh, okay. So I'll share the final dimensions of this now with you guys. 13 and 7 eighths wide, 8 and 7 eighths tall. So, there we go, that's awesome. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of massaging to get the spine to be the shape I want it to be because I kind of want it to be squared, not just like one crease, but kind of like a book where it's got two creases to make a spine section so that I can punch the holes exactly where I want them to and it stays in the right shape. So now I've got the shape I want. You see that spine where it's nice and square? Oh, I'm so stoked on that. So 
let's start burnishing the edges. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same X-Acto knife and I'm going to come by and just kind of bevel the edges. This is kind of a futzy job and I have to do it really close to my face. So I'll just cut back and show you what it looks like at the end. So here I've beveled all of the edges. Let's do a little zoom in here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So I've made it so that each of these edges isn't sharp. That way I can burnish it and kind of shine up the edge so that it's not rough like the inside of this leather is. So it's pretty uneven, but I'm okay with that. I could buy a really fancy leather working set and get like more even edges here, but this is good enough for me. So the next step for me is choosing which side I want to be the front and the back. There's a stain here and a stain here, and I kind of think I like this stain better, which is kind of silly. It's like right there in the front. I don't know, maybe in the back. No, I think I like it right there in the front. Because it kind of looks like it's more worn here, and it's the front, so it makes sense that it would be like more splashed on than the back would be. Anyway. So that's gonna be the front. Now, let's punch some holes for my elastics. So I've got this lovely leather punch tool, which uh, is perfect for this job, but I've also decided that I want to do three holes just like my other version here. So those, I also like the spacing of them, so I think I'm pretty much just gonna copy that. So I'm gonna punch the holes a quarter of an inch in from the top and bottom edges. And then I'm also going to space the next holes about a quarter of an inch over from that center point. <laughs> I was wondering what size hole I should do, but then I saw the plug from the exact last time I used this size punch, which is from <laughs> these leather case or leather covers. So I guess I'm gonna be using this size, whatever that is. There we go, baby. Yeah. Wow, look at it, it's starting to come together, guys. It's so exciting. So we also need to put a single hole in the center there so that I can put the elastic around the outside. I was thinking, however, about how in general bullet journals have a elastic going from the top to the bottom, so feel free to do that. You would just put a single hole in the back part of the journal, so you'd put a hole right here. Then you can have elastic coming around like that. But I think I'm gonna stick with the traveler's notebook style elastic from the center back. So let's put one there. Now to get this hole in the center, I need to use an awl because my other, this thing can only reach in about two inches and this is, you know, roughly four inches in. So I'm gonna use this awl. So there you have it. Big hole in the back with an awl. So now it's time to add my elastics. This is just some elastic that I've salvaged from, I don't even know where, somewhere, probably a thrift store somewhere. But um, it's a little bit thin for what I would like, but uh, I'm going to use it anyway. So first I'm gonna start with putting a double knot there because I don't earn overhand knot, I suppose. Because I don't have a super long piece. Okay, and now I know this piece is long enough because it's gonna reach from the top to the bottom and back. And then there's gonna be a couple little pieces to tie, so I know it's the perfect length. So to start off, I'm gonna lace it through the top, top center hole. Lace both ends through that. I'm going to lace both of the ends through the center bottom hole on the inside and that will give us two loops. Now making sure I keep them separate, 
and in order, I'm going to add a, leave a little bit of tension in that, I'm going to flip this over and lace them accordingly back through, scooching over and going back through from the outside to the inside. Oh, hi little bug. And after doing that, I'm going to lace back up through these holes. And I will say, yes, that leaves a naughty mess on the top up here, but I'm gonna add charms to this at some point too. So that'll end up hiding all of the mess. You could do this another way if you had a fuller length of string, you could have all of the knots on the inside of these elastics, but I really do prefer my elastics to be flat because it allows for my books to close more evenly. So it creates less bulk in here. Now for our center elastic. So I want to do something a little different for my elastic that goes around my entire journal. So I have this strip of leather and I'm going to try to lace it and see what happens. So after getting this leather installed, I wonder if I'm going to end up using this leather. I might end up switching it out for an elastic because I think it's going to be an ordeal to open and close this and uh, to have to like loop the or loop the leather and like make sure it stays tight. So I might be a little tired of this after a while, but I think it's worth experimenting with because I try to stay away from synthetic materials as much as I can and elastic is one of those. While I was making this, I was also contemplating using just cord, like general cord, because it might end up working in here. If you, if you space everything properly and you al allow enough room for your, uh, I guess for your books to shift slightly so it won't be as tight as an elastic would make it. But um, I think you could totally get away without using elastic, just finding some cotton cording. And that would make this a completely biodegradable product. It would just be leather with a, uh, you know, a cotton cord in the center. So anyway, I might experiment with that more down the road. So let's get her all filled up and see how everything fits. fits so perfectly oh my goodness that little extra width helped so much with this bullet journal being able to fit in this traveler's notebook oh I'm so excited <laughs> Yay! the reason I had to do this is because this bullet journal wouldn't fit and this is what I'm gonna be migrating into at the beginning of the year so I'm just getting ready for my next year and now I have everything I need to do that <laughs> Thank you so much for watching you guys. I hope you really enjoyed seeing at least my process for how I make Traveler's Notebook covers. There are some people who make really fancy ones that have pockets in the front and stuff. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this and if you do end up making your own Traveler's Notebook out of scrap leather, please hit me up and tell me how it goes. Leave a comment down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video and Traveler's Notebooks videos I've made in the past, please consider subscribing to the channel because I make traveler's notebook videos, bullet journal videos, witchcraft videos, all sorts of stuff. So if that sounds appealing, I would love if you were to subscribe and stick around. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Happy Yule! Bye!